Okay friends, we are talking about antigen-antibody interactions. We have seen uh, the introductory part and the properties of antigen-antibody interaction. In this video, we will be seeing how to apply this antigen-antibody properties, especially the specificity and the type of interactions, that means the type of agglutination or precipitation uh, for, the, uh, for, for our purpose, that means for diagnosing or for getting different informations. Now in this case we'll be talking about agglutination mainly because we can utilize agglutination as a tool agglutination as a tool for detecting the blood group of human as well as we can use agglutination as a tool for detecting whether there is any infection uh, caused by type of bacteria inside our body or not inside our blood or not okay so how to establish this process it's, it's very simple it's very simple the type of effect the type of uh, answer that we are wanting depending upon the time we will cha cha change the different type of options that we are having okay now the type of agglutination studies is also called hemagglutination because we are talking about agglutination in blood so we talk uh, it, it, blood is called the heme so it is called the hemagglutination so the process we will be ta talking here is agglutination or hemaglu sorry hemagglutination okay so here it is for our interest hemagglutination or agglutination now the process of hemagglutination or agglutination can be further divided into two different segment one is qualitative type another one is quantitative type so it can be of qualitative it can be of quantitative okay now in this case we'll be first talking about the qualitative type of hemagglutination or agglutination steps now this qualitative as the term suggests it will only tell us whether the type of uh, whether there is any agglutination uh, is present or not whether there is any antigen or antibody interacting with or not but we, this quantitative nature is telling us the amount of antigen that is present in our sample or the amount of antibody that is present in our sample. That's the difference. Quantitative is giving us much more information, detailed information about the concentration. But the qualitative is simply telling whether it is present or not. That's the difference. Now for the qualitative type, it is much more easier as it is telling us just yes or no. So what we need to do, we need to take our... Uh, what we can say uh, so let me take a sample so suppose here it is a tube inside the tube is our sample sample means we are having our antigens now we want to know whether the patient's serum is having any kind of antibody against this kind of antigen or not we want to know that so here it is the antigen so I am uh, denoting antigen with this blue color this is our antigen for a particular disease suppose it's a part of a bacteria okay now you want to know the this uh, sample one so let me take a sample one so the sample one from for a patient which is having the antibody sufficient antibody to deal with this antigen or not how to prove this so we take the serum so it's simply most of the case serum so we take the serum out of this patient one and what we do is simply add the serum onto this mixture now what is our hypothesis it can carry antibody or it cannot carry any antibody now if it is carries uh, if it carries the antibody then what happens then the antibody will agglutinate this antigen and what we get we can see the agglutination easily because this is what we are having are the antigens and if we provide antibody if the agglutination happens we can easily understand this concept right because in case of agglutination if we look for the blood agglutination the blood cells are the red blood cells they will start to crumple also all together this has to agglutinate and adhere all together so we can easily look for this process now if we look for uh, this this suppose this is a patient's uh, blood suppose this is the patient's blood having the particular type of disease we don't know what kind of disease we need to profile that what kind of antibody can cure this kind of disease so to know that we take the blood to take this blood sample along with the antigen and what we put the serum which is made previously which is having the antibody or simply without the serum we can also provide uh, the antibody solution also we can pr provide antibody solution also and if we provide it to understand to check whether this antigen is interacting with this antibody or not if the antibody is working enough against this antigen we can design it we can produ produce the vaccine and can inject it right 
to cure this. Now, for this purpose, if we use this, now these antigens are of uh, particulate type. So, what it will do, and obviously, red blood cells are there. So, RBCs are there, obviously. RBCs are there. Now, what will they do? So, this is RBCs, and everything is just placed like that. Now, once after adding this, it could be two different answers. It could be as it is, or it could be something like this. So, what we get is a type of agglutinate conditions. So, you get this, and as we are having red, white blo red blood cells, so all the blood cells will come together. What we form is something a structure like this. So, this is a conversion, this is the change that we can observe by just looking at it. And we call yes, here it is the agglutination. Now, as we see the agglutination in the blood cell or red blood cell, we call it heme agglutination. Or hemagglutination. Okay, so by looking at it, we can tell yes, the antigen is interacting with the antibody, right? Like that. Now, this process is used simply to understand the blood grouping or blood cell typing inside our body, right? So, what we are having, remember, in our blood, in our surface of the red blood cell, what we are having is simply so. Let me now let's talk about uh, the blood grouping. So, inside onto the surface of our blood, so here it is the red blood cell. So, let, let red blood cell on the surface of the red blood cell, we are having different antigens. So, these are the antigens for one patient. So, this is another red blood cell of patient 2 having different type of antigen onto the surface of red blood cells because they are also called the ag ag agglutinogen or antigen because they are helping in agglutination. That's why they are called agglutinogen or antigen. Now, what we, ca we can see here, uh, we provide antibody. We provide antibody to both the cases. So, here we provide the antibody A. Now, this antibody A binds with this particular epitope, this particular type of antigen. So it binds here. But this antibody never bound to this this type of antigen that are having in the patient 2. So it's a RBC of patient 1, this is RBC of patient 2. Okay. So this same antibody binds with this patient 1 antigen but cannot bind with this patient 2 antigen. So by looking at it, we, what we can say here we get the agglutination. You won't get any agglutination. So, antibody here it is anti A antibody. That means the antigen that are present here, if it is a, a, anti A means the antibody is distant against the antigen A. Anti B antibody means the antigen, uh, the anti B antibody means the antibody is distant against the antigen B. Anti C antibody means that, uh, or anti AB antibody means. That that antibody is destined to go against or attach with antibody antigen A and antigen B, both of them. Now here, as this anti A antibody binds with this particular patient's blood, that we can say that yes, this blood, uh, this particular patient is having antigen A on its surface because the antibody we have provided is anti A. Now this A means antigen. So A is a type of antigen, right? So the type of antigen. Present here is A because if it is not A, anti A won't bind with it. Now, here there is no antigen A, there is suppose antigen B. So, we must need anti B antibody for the agglutination of this, but we provide anti A, so anti A won't bind with it. Okay, so by looking at this, what we can say, yes, we provided anti A antibody, and by providing it, we can know that it can only bind to antigen. A. And how can you know whether it is binding or not? See the agglutination. Now, if there is agglutination, that means this anti -A antibody binds with antigen A, and that means the sample is containing antigen A. Now, here, same thing is happening agglutination, that means it is bound, bound with this place, so there is, there must be antigen A onto this patient's blood. So, that means we now characterize this patient as a blood group A. But this is not blood group A because it haven't agglutinated, or even it is not an blood group AB because this is not even. If it is also AB, then also this anti -A antibody might have bound to some regions. So you get slight type of modification, but we haven't found any modifications in this particular class. So it it must not be blood group A. It may not be blood group AB. It must be different something, right? 
so these are the differences how that's the way of utilizing qualitative type of agglutination assays to figure out whether there is any antigen or not simply yes or no answering okay